everybody. Welcome to yoga. My name is Sarah. I'll be guiding you through the next hour or so. This is yoga. Yoga means a complete science of life and well-being. It can mean different things to different people. Some of us just need to stretch. Some of us need to clear the chatter of our minds, right? Um, others just have never done it before, so they want to see what it can do, and the benefits are endless. We'll help with tension, with anxiety, with flexibility. Um, sometimes we even get moments where we we figure out places that we didn't even know need to, needed to open. Um, so I hope you experience some of those things today and more, whatever you're looking for. Just know that all of the, the things that bubble up on your mat are all useful. So we'll get started today in um, child's pose. If you have a block handy or a rolled up blanket, I want you to find, find and just stick it next to you. Um, as far as pregnancy uh, precaution, Let's never lay flat on our back, so make sure you always have a pillow, a block, or a blanket underneath your hips if we are on our back. Um, no pushing, no like striving for anything that you haven't done before as far as flexibility, like it's not the time to go into full splits if you haven't been there before. Um, but everything else, you should be, you should be good. Um, make sure to check with your doctor if there's anything that you are really concerned about. Um, if there's any places of pain, of sharp tension, or anything like that, please avoid that pose. So again, child's pose, your big toes are touching, your knees are pretty wide, maybe even the width of your mat, and your hips sit all the way back, hands go forward. If you're like me and forgot to get a hair tie, I invite you to grab a hair tie so that your hair is out of your face. And your practice begins now. Take a deep breath in through your nose, filling up your belly, your ribs, and your chest. And on your exhale, I want you to feel the spaces that are touching your mat, whether it's your knees, your toes, whatever is touching the mat. On your exhale, soften. Feel a sense of release here. Again, deep breath in, belly, ribs, chest. And on your exhale, sink, soften. If it feels better to you, you can take one ear to the mat. If you took the right ear down, then take the left ear down. Using these deep diaphragmatic breaths is something that we're rarely told to do, right? Nobody really teaches us how to breathe when we get really caught up and busy and anxious or caught up in our day, in our to-do list. Sometimes we can feel like there's a million people talking, right? Yoga helps because yoga pulls us back into our present moment and it reminds us that at the end of the day, this breath is all we really have. Let's breathe together today, my friends. Hop up into your box pose. So box pose is just tabletop. We want to find our true alignment. So your wrists under your shoulders, your knees under your hips. Pull your navel into your spine, knit your ribs back, and feel your transverse abdominis start to fire up that huge muscle group that just holds everything in place. I want you to take the tops of your feet and give the floor a little pat. Just waking up the energy in the lower body. Find some stillness here. Curl under your toes and walk your hands back. Hips on your heels. Just for a moment, countering all of the walking that we do, all of the carrying, all of the weight we hold up all day. And we'll walk it back out into your boxer tabletop. I want us to take some big, generous circles with the hips. And if there's any place where you feel a glitch or a place that's tight or tense. I want you to save some space for yourself. And here's a tight place. So I always get really tight around, like right here, like, what is this? Seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Take a big breath in. And on your exhale, see if you can sink and soften into that space. And there is no wrong way to do this. A big part of yoga is self-inquiry just to notice how we're showing up and being okay, 100% okay. All right, extend the left leg behind you, right arm forward, thumb pointing up, big breath in here. On your exhale, take your right knee, excuse me, your right elbow to your left knee. Inhale, extend, exhale, knee to elbow. One more time, inhale and exhale. Take your right hand down, extend your left leg behind you, Big breath in, 
And on your exhale, bend your elbows, chin down, chest down. Pop back up, close it knee to knee. Opposite side, right leg extends. And as that right leg extends, notice all the intri intricacies of the belly, of the left hip, of the right hip that have to fire up to make you hold the shape. We are pretty incredible beings. Extend your left arm, breathe in. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow. One more time, inhale, up. Exhale, knee to elbow. Left hand down, extend the leg. And on your next exhale, I want us to bend the elbows, take your chest down, chin down. Come back up, knee to knee. Beautiful. With your big toes touching, let's take the knees a little bit wider. Sink your hips back, child's pose. Beautiful, I want you to take your palms together in your child's pose, leave your forehead on the mat, and take your hands up over your head. And at this time, I want you to set intention for your practice today, your why. It can be to breathe bigger, it can be to choose kindness, it could be to really whatever you need it to be, self-love, self-care, to be here now. All right, let's come all the way up and we'll take a seat. All right, so we're seated, I'll face you today. Let's work on some breathing. Alright, so we want to have this big, deep, diaphragmatic breath, and your breath will always start at the base of your belly. So with your hands on your knees, let's place them face up, ready to receive. Let's take six deep, diaphragmatic breaths together to start our practice, our movement practice. Take a deep breath in through your nose, filling up your belly, ribs, chest, like there's a balloon in there, right? A big balloon. Choose its color. And then on your exhale, ride that wave of breath back down, so it's chest ribs, belly. Beautiful. Again, inhale through your nose and exhale through the nose. Inhale, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, feel the shoulders melt away from your ears, sinking into the back pocket. Couple more times. Breathe in. And breathe out. Okay, so we'll start in um, hero's pose today. So if you have a block, I want you to place the block right under your hips, right under your booty. And put your heels on either side of that block. We have a super straight spine today, working on our posture. Shoulders slide down your back into your back pockets. Your belly is soft, but thin. Your eyes are soft or closed. Let's take four deep diaphragmatic breaths here. Take another breath in through your nose. Belly fills up first. Ribs, chest. And then on your exhale, that's really where the magic happens in our breath. We're able to expel stagnant air, stagnant energy, basically the stuff we don't need. Again, let's try it one more time. Deep belly breath. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest. And then on a super slow and steady exhale, I want you to visualize something that you no longer need. You don't need it doesn't serve you. And with the breath, as you push the breath out, let it take whatever that thing is with it. Let's take two more just like that. Breathe in. And breathe out. Beautiful. Flip your eyes open, arms at side body. 
Inhale, gather all this beautiful energy. And on a slow exhale, we'll take a little drift to the right. And you can even turn your face up if that feels good to you. We're looking for a side lateral stretch in the intercostals, moving from about right here, the left hip point all the way off the right, excuse me, left fingertips. Come back to center. Inhale, gather. And on your exhale, we'll take this right arm up and over. And turn your gaze towards your inner elbow. Let's do that one more time. Inhale up and gather. Exhale, reach right. Inhale up and exhale, reach left. Staying seated, we'll take another little mini flow before we move to down dog. Inhale, arms up. Interlace your fingers. Palms go high. On your exhale, take your chin to your chest. We're finding a little cat rounding stretch in the back. Beautiful. Inhale, take the arms up. Separate the fingertips. They find the space behind you, right at your sacrum, your low back. Interlace your fingers. Inhale, roll your shoulders up and back. And exhale, release. Let's do that again. Inhale, arms up. Interlace your fingers. Turn your palms up. On your exhale, tuck the chin. Round. Inhale, pull up. And exhale, release. Interlace your hands right at your sacrum. Inhale, roll your shoulders down and back away from your ears. Palms are touching. And release. All right, remove your block if you took it from underneath your bum. And with your big toes touching, we must take our knees really wide. So to the wide edges of your mat. And your fingers reaching towards the top of your mat, forehead down. This is child's pose. This is the place where when you need a break, when you need that passive reset, whether it's from yoga or working out or kids or whatever it is, this is the place that you know that you feel safe in your two by six. Your two by six is your yoga mat that you can just be and you can soften into the corners and the edges and you can just know that you're exactly where you need to be and all of the tools that you need are inside. So with that being said, let's set an intention for our practice from child's pose. Fingers together, fingers spread wide, place them right on top of your head. And this is a moment, stay in this pose, I'm gonna exit this pose. But this is a moment where I want you to visualize something that you want, something you need out of the practice. Sometimes it can be your why. Why am I here practicing yoga? All these shapes on a mat. Um, for me, it's to quiet chatter. For someone else, it might be to find flexibility or to find calm, um, whatever it is. Take a few moments. Breathe it in and breathe it out. All right, so push up into box pose. We'll slowly curl under our toes and find downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, you're an inverted V. Micro bend your knees if you'd like, walk your feet out side to side, bending one knee, straightening the leg. Let your head hang, head hang heavy. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. On your exhale, walk to the top of your mat. And we're gonna hang out here in a rag doll called dangling pose, where we grab opposite elbows and maybe you start to sway from side to side. This is a beautiful place to be. If it's the morning, it's a great time to greet the day, just to check in. We use yoga where we see it as shapes, but it's really a self-inquiry into how we're showing up. Being okay with it all. Knowing that it's all useful. Let's release our hands and take your feet about the width of your mat. With your right hand down, bend your right knee. The hip kind of pops out. Inhale, take your left arm up. If you need to make the ground a little bit closer to you, feel free to use a book or a block for a nice little heart opener here. Beautiful breath. Let's switch sides. So bend your knees and then straighten your legs. Take your left hand to the block. Bend your left knee. Inhale, right arm opens you up here for this beautiful heart opening place. Beautiful. 
beautiful breath. Both hands down. Let's remove the block if you took it, heel toe the feet about hip width distance. Inhale, halfway lift, straight spine, belly in, ribs are tucked back. Exhale, forward fold. You can grab the ankles. You can also just put your hands on the floor or your shins. Inhale, halfway lift. Let's try that again. And exhale, forward fold. Paschimottanasana. Inhale into chair pose. This is our first chair pose, Utkatasana. Your feet can be touching. You can also leave about a fist width distance in between your feet, especially if you have low back stuff going on. Slide your shoulders into your back pockets. If it's too much pressure to keep your hands extended upwards, take them to your heart. And then on your next exhale, we squeeze the glutes on the way up. We're into Dasana. This is Mountain Pose. Arms at side body. Inhale, arms up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, plant your hands. Let's walk it back to plank. Drop your knees if you need to modify. Chaturanga, upward facing dog or cobra. So just breaking them down, cobra, you would keep your hips, your legs, everything's on the mat. It's just an upper chest lift. If you would like an active back bend, you push into the tops of your feet, push into your hands, keep your gaze slightly elevated and your hips and your thighs will lift. On your exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, walk or lightly float near the top of your mat. We'll slowly roll all the way up to standing. Samasthiti here at the top of your mat. Inhale into chair. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Plant your hands. Walk or float it back. High to low. Upward facing dog or cobra. I'm going to stick with cobra today. And then on a slow exhale, down dog. Beautiful, one more time. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, walk or float through at the top of your mat. Roll all the way up, take your arms with you, hands at your heart. Inhale into chair. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, walk or float it back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra, downward facing dog. All right, from here, inhale, right leg lifts to your degree of flexibility. And then on your exhale, let's take it in between the hands. Pivot the back foot to about 45 degrees or so. And this is warrior one. So a little tip here, if you're finding compression in the low back, I want us to separate our feet. Like they're on railroad tracks. So they're in about a foot between this foot and this foot if I'm looking straight down. Where you would. Beautiful. On your exhale, take your hands behind you. Breathe in, roll your shoulders down and back away from your ears. And then exhale into humble warrior. And this hands can come up and over. They don't have to. If you feel more secure here, please take it. Slowly release, coming out of this into reverse warrior without sacrificing your bend in your right knee. We're really reaching up first and then back. So if I could lift your, your ribs, I'd lift your ribs up first and then tip it back. Beautiful. From here, left knee bends for your wide side lunge. This is called Skandasana. Hands at your heart in prayer or in front of you. Let's push into the earth and come into a wide forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Use your fingertips on the mat. Exhale, forward fold. Again, inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands to your hips. Let's slowly roll all the way up to standing. We'll turn our right toes to the front of the room. And our left toes are diagonal, so around 45 degrees, that same warrior one foot. Tee out your arms, breathe in. On your exhale, tip your hips to the left so that you can tuck the right 
tushy under. So your right bum is tucked under. And if you need a block to make the ground closer to you, this is Trikonasana Triangle Pose. So like we're being squeezed in between that place between like your, your car door and the garage wall. Let's take five breaths here in Trikonasana, Triangle Pose. Noticing any places that are falling or slouching and instead finding the spaces in the musculature to lift, to be active here. Beautiful exhale, look down. Inhale, come up and we'll take it to the other side. So grab your block if you needed it. So your right toes turn in this time. Take the block down if you need to. Breathe in, lengthen through your spine and then exhale, tip. Trikonasana, triangle pose on the left. And again, straight lines of energy. Find that strength over slouch. So sometimes we get here and we want to kind of like sink in because we're maybe a little bit more flexible than, than we give ourselves credit for. But use the musculature of the spine, of the belly, of the arms, of the legs, of the ankles to stay lifted here. Exhale, look down. Top arm and core pull you all the way up. Beautiful. We'll turn both of our toes out. Breathe in. On your exhale, God or Goddess squat. And we'll take three deep belly breaths here. For the last two, we hop up onto our tippy toes if you need a little challenge today. If you don't, keep your heels on the mat. On your next inhale, squeeze the booty on the way up. And then we'll hop to the top of your mat. Back to your mountain pose. Inhale, arms up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Breathe in. On your exhale, let's walk it back to down dog. Inhale, left leg up. Bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, stick it all the way through. Dial down the back foot. Warrior one, your hips and your shoulders are to the front of the room. Equal amount of weight in the both in both feet. Interlace your hands behind you right at your sacrum. Inhale, roll down and back. And then exhale, humble warrior. Again, you can take your hands up and over if you'd like. You can also just leave them right where they're at. Let your head hang heavy. Without whipping your hands apart, let's slowly release. Inhale into reverse warrior. And from here, right knee bends for wide side lunge or skandasana. Beautiful. Let's walk it to the front of the house. Right hand down. Inhale, left arm up. This is dragonfly twist. This is one of my favorite poses. If you need a little bit more secure of a base, you can drop your back knee, top of the foot down. Beautiful, both hands down. Keep your back knee grounded. If it's not grounded, let's ground it. And shift the weight of your chest forward, getting into the psoas. Should be a nice release here. Your next exhale, your hips go back, straighten your front leg. Half split. Coming forward. Take the left knee to meet the knee, and we'll switch sides. So bring the right foot forward, left hand down, and he'll right arm up for dragonfly twist on the toe or on the knee. You choose. Both hands down. Let's push our fingertips into the earth to really leverage the hips here. Shoulders down in your back pockets. Breathe big. Breathing into places that house tension. Most of the time it's in your hips. Shift the weight of your hips back for your half split. And you can also use that block on your half split. Place it right underneath your right thigh bone. Gives you a little bit more structure here. You can also sit it all the way back. Beautiful. 
And from here, we'll start to walk ourselves forward. Both feet step up. You're at the top of your mat. All right, we have one more little flow before we take it to the mat today. So from here, inhale, arms up, reach up. On your exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Plant your hands. Let's walk it back to down dog. Inhale, right leg up. On your exhale, bend the knee. Open the hip. Beautiful breath here. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, bring it through for half pigeon pose. So your right knee will come to the back of your right wrist, and this left heel will come to wherever flexibility allows. The more it comes towards your wrist, it's pretty intense. The less it comes to your wrist, it is a little bit easier to facilitate a fold. You can place a block underneath your right hip. You can also take the block and see if we can put our forehead on it. Either way, great place to be. We're gonna be here for about five full breaths. You could go somewhere new in these poses. Beautiful. And know that when thoughts come up in your yoga practice or in life, you don't have to go with them. So just like a cloud floating by in the sky, when something pops up, just let it float, float by. The I'm not good enough, the this should look different, the this should feel different, anything and everything that's telling you no, right? Just let it float away. Check back in with your intention, with your why. As we move down to the mat, it's super, super normal for things to bubble up because we are finding stillness. But know that every journey must have stillness. Start to flip your eyes open. Let's walk ourselves back up. Pull your right heel into your hip and your left leg's out of the diagonal. Left arm underneath you, scoop the right arm up and over. And so we're not only getting a leg hamstring opener, we're getting a heart and an intercostal opener. So we're opening up all that space in the rib cage. This should feel pretty good. If it's too intense, I want us to leave out the leg and just reach for the top body. Take a full spiral out of this. Coming back into that three leg dog. Bend the knee, open the hip. And then close it down dog. Left side, inhale, left leg up, bend the knee, open the hip. On your exhale, let's take it all the way through for half pigeon. Back knee down, top of the knee down. And you can see here, you can start to hinge forward. You can also put that block right underneath your hip if you need a little bit more support. Three more big breaths here. Letting go of any muscular engagement, anything that is like sticking, clenching, tightening. Send some breath there. Look at your eyes open, walk your hands up. We'll pull this left heel into the into the hip, extend the right leg out beside you. Right arm under, left arm over. Recovery to Shana Sarsasan, sort of all head team pose. Beautiful, and also when we come out of this, curling under your right toes, sending your left leg skyward, and then close it, down dog. From downward facing dog, let's walk our feet all the way to our hands. And sit on our booties. Extend your legs in front of you for seated forward fold. So if you're pregnant and you have a belly, I invite you to take your feet about hip width distance to accommodate. Inhale, arms up. And on your slow exhale, we find our toes, our shins, or our ankles. 
And this is a forward fold. It can be as active as you need it to be, keeping a straight spine, lengthen and fold with a spine that is nice and straight. If you're looking for a more restorative feel today, which if you're pretty, if you're pregnant, I invite you to go here. I want you to just feel like you're like melting on top of your legs. So that means one, not going as far because you're not striving to go any deeper. You're striving more for relaxation, right? So the opposite of striving. So here we go. This is called Caterpillar. And you will feel muscles start to contract and you will feel stuff start to get um, uncomfortable and tense and tight. The part of the practice that we're moving into now is where we let go of anything that is taking up energy. We let go of anything that is taking up too much engagement of our muscles. And you tell your brain and you make these pathways, I wish you well, it's okay, you can release. You don't have to walk around so tense. And that's where the magic happens. And it normally happens on the exhalation. So if we extend our exhalations just from the beginning of class, I believe it will serve your body. Let's take 10 more breaths here in either Paschimottanasana, just that seated forward fold, we're really getting into the hamstrings, or in caterpillar where we're finding that melting. Two more breaths here. Inhale, look up. And on your exhale, release your legs. You might need to pop them on the ground for a couple seconds just to get blood moving. All right, take both feet in. And we'll just find some mindful movement here in the hips. Beautiful. And extend your right leg in front of you, pull the left heel in. And if you've been coming for a while, you can even put this foot in the hip crease. Take a little half locus here. If that doesn't serve you today, the foot lines up perfectly right in the inner thigh of the right leg. Inhale, arms up. On your exhale, lean with your heart. Fold. This is head to knee pose. Your foot is flexed. Your elbows are up off the mat. Inhale, look up. On your exhale, release. Let's go right into the other side here. Pull the right heel into the hip crease, and you can even pop it into your half lotus. It's a variation. Inhale, arms up. On your exhale, again, lead with your lowest rib. We slowly start to fold over the left leg. Beautiful. Two more breaths here. Really remembering to soften and extend the exhalation as we get into those places of tension and tightness. Beautiful. Flick your eyes open, release your foot. All right. We have made it to the mat. So we finished in legs up the wall. This is Viparita Karani. If you're near a wall, you can either move your mat or just move your body. Pad the hips with a blanket, a quilt or a block. If you have a bolster, you can also use a bolster. And we're putting our bums right on that. So we pat our hips, especially if you're pregnant and you slide your booty all the way to the wall. And legs are at the wall. If you have a rope tie or a, a ribbon of some kind, it, you, can, you don't have to be fancy. Um, it doesn't have to be a yoga strap. But if you have one, you can tie it around your ankles or your shins so that when you're having your legs up the wall, they don't float apart. Sometimes that happens when we get really relaxed, the legs start to, to move to the opposite corners of the room. So Viparita Karani, I hope that you're in this pose at least three times a week, five to 10 minutes at a time. It relieves things like achy feet, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, 
fresh blood to the lower extremities. It can help with headaches and nausea as well, um, but it's, it's, um, its effects are literally endless. It's a magic, it's a magic pose for people who are pregnant. So again, five to 10 minutes a day, you'll get five minutes here today. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. I'm gonna breathe and rest here. And I really want us to focus our intention on our exhale. Take a deep breath in through the nose. When you're ready to release the breath, I want you to exhale for like two seconds longer. Again, deep breath in. And out. Beautiful. I want us to continue with this breath for the next five minutes. I'm going to exit the pose, but I want you to stay here. And just as slow as we got into this posture, let's pull our knees into our chest first. Roll to the right or left, whatever feels best for you. And slowly roll out of this pose. Okay. It's been my honor to guide you through this practice today. I hope that you join me again. From my heart directly to yours, all my love, all my light, and all my blessings. Namaste.